Okay, welcome to today's episode of Conversations with John and Lisa Bevere. And John, I feel like this is such a crucial, important topic that we are going to be covering. We're not just doing it in one. One, we're going to do two. Multiple sessions Yeah, because it's this so one. important. Yeah. Dude. And before we dive into that, I just want to invite you to rate, subscribe, give us some feedback. If you do, you might get read on conversation. So right. today's impact is from Shamil Berta. And this is what she says. Okay. You two have been part of my life since I was 16. This How old is always, she now? Yes. This always shocks me. And I'm 35, 35. now. Oh, so wow. Almost 20 years. When I was 16, I went to a conference where Lisa talked about body image to the young ladies in Colorado. I can't thank you enough for your real, raw, and true conversations about the Lord to help people grow into the men and women they are today. That's really good. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about two parts on some spiritual warfare. And one of the books that I remember reading, John, when I was preparing for Girls with Swords is The Art of War. <laughs> you I, read The Art of War. I did. I love it. I did. I did. So Sun Tzu is the author of The Art of War. And I'm going to read a quote. He said, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. You know, one of the things, okay, I love I love the art of war, but I also love the Italian mindset on fencing. They said, you know your enemy's strategy, but you never play his game. You play your game. You play to your strengths. And we're going to be talking about, do you know your enemy? Because yes. I think... You know, John, there was a there was a moment before we dive into this. I remember before we got married, you know, I went back to my hometown of West Lafayette, Indiana, and I had such an awareness of spiritual attack. Yeah. I remember it was attacking me when I slept at night. I remember I felt this constant oppression, constant fear, started mm -hmm. really wrestling with eating disorders, and my whole life felt disruptive. And I called my spiritual father, Del Das. And I said, Dell, this is what's going on. And he said, Lisa, I'm going to tell you, it's not your parents. He said, it is an enemy. And he said, you're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but there is something really dark. And he said, knowing who your enemy is, is half the battle when you know what you are fighting against. And also the apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11, he says, lest Satan should get advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So not only do we know who our enemy is, it's not flesh and blood, mm -hmm. it's not human beings, mm -hmm. it's principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. We also know their devices. So in essence, yeah. we've got that covered, which you read from The Art of War. And <clears throat> the thing is, today, there is such an uprise of spiritual warfare going on in America. But the problem is, we're seeing it as flesh and blood it's flesh and blood fighting against flesh and blood instead of realizing we're dealing with forces that are trying to divide. And division is Satan's purpose. He wants to divide us so he can conquer us. Yeah, because houses divided will fall. not stand. Yeah, Kingdoms fall. divided will not stand. Families divided will not, not stand. stand. Churches divided will not stand. Mm -hmm. And if the enemy can get us divided, he can conquer. And that is why the Bible says that how good and how pleasant it is when brothers and sisters dwell together in unity. But do you have unity around God compromise? Commands his blessing. No. Because I do feel like there's a lot of people that are willing to compromise to have a false unity. Correct. Okay. I, I, I believe that as well. And then you can look at the healthy balance to that, Paul said, there must be divisions among you to the Corinthian church that those who are of approved fitness and character might be recognized among you. In other words, Paul was saying, you're going to have people inside of the church structure that are going to be compromising truth. He said, and there will be divisions among you because those who adhere to truth, it will look like there's a division, but it's actually so that those who are of truth can be recognized. Hmm. But let's get back to what we're really talking about here yeah. in our society today. So it's not the liberals or the Democrats or the Republicans mm -hmm. or the conservatives that are the problem. 
I think, you know, we as believers need to realize these people are prisoners. They're prisoners of war. Yeah. And when people are prisoners of war, I mean, Satan, I should say this, demonic forces want to express themselves. Right. But they need a physical body to express themselves. Example, Jesus delivers the demoniac. What do the 2,000, because it was a legion of demons, a 2,000 demons in that man say? Let us Please, go into the herd of pigs. We yep. want to go to the pigs. Yep. Now, what's the guy doing? He's cutting himself, right? So he's got a suicidal spirit on him, right? As soon as those spirits leave him and go into those pigs, the pigs commit suicide. They run down the hill and go into the lake and they wow. all die. Wow. Wow. So that spirit of suicide manifests itself fully through those pigs. And that is what that man was fighting against. Now, when the man gets free, the Bible says he's clothed and he's in, he's in his right mind. Now, this is a guy that people are terrified of going near. Yeah, they, he was running Bible around says, in the tombs, yeah, in the places of death. They yeah. wouldn't. They, they, they didn't have <clears throat> asylum. What do you call them? Insane institutions, asylums. In the, yeah. They didn't have asylums back in those days. So they had to put those guys out in the tombs, out in the wilderness. And and he, they would chain him, and he broke the chains. The yeah. demonic power was so strong in him, right? So people feared and wouldn't even go near him. Yet Jesus, one encounter with Jesus. And he's sitting with Jesus clothed and in his right mind. And then Jesus makes him an evangelist, says, go tell the 10 cities. So all wait, these- Wait, he didn't send him to seminary first? No, he didn't. Okay, but can I ask you That's something, good. John? Because there are people that would say that when Jesus died on the cross, that Satan was stripped of all of his authority and power. Is, is there still <laughs> demonic oppression? Is there still- principalities and power. Like, tell us about that. Absolutely. Because Paul made the statement in Ephesians chapter six, long after Jesus was raised from the dead, we don't wrestle, we don't war against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, Just rulers of the be. darkness of this world and spiritual weaknesses in high places. And yep. you're probably open to it. I did. And it says and we are supposed it. to take the whole armor of God, yep. which is what? Girding our loins about with truth. That means, yep. hey, Truth girds us. That's what that's what stabilizes us, right? Shotting our feet with the preparation of the gospel yep. of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith where we'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the all evil of one. Taking the what? Helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. I forgot the breastplate of righteousness. But we literally need to put on the armor of God, which that the enemy fears the word of God. He yep. fears it because yep. it's literally a sword and he has been disarmed. Mm -hmm. So when what we would realize is unbelievers don't have this, right? right? Unbelievers are totally susceptible to demonic attacks, correct? I mean, they open up easier to demonic forces. Right. We have the power to speak to these forces in the name of Jesus, and they must obey us. Jesus made the statement. He said, behold, I give you power over all, all, not 98%. All the power of the enemy and nothing yeah. shall by any means hurt you. Now, it's Luke 10, 19. So we need to keep that in mind when we're addressing these situations. We don't need to fear. When you fear God and you've humbled yourself among the mighty hand of God and you have that armor on. And you're walking you in obedience. Yes. to fear. Okay, so then how does the enemy gain access into our lives? Because I am seeing that. He, he slips in. Yes. And, you know, I'm going to, we're going to talk about some specifics on that. But, you know, John, you know, a few years ago, I had the incredible privilege of ministering at the Q conference and the speaker before me was a Catholic exorcist. <laughs> I and, remember and that. he began to talk about how uh, the spiritual oppression and possession in the United States of America, now, again, this is back in 2018, was reaching an epidemic proportion, spirits of suicide, spirits of all these different things. And we asked him, we said, why? How is this happening? How is this gaining entrance in the lives of Americans, in the lives of Christians? Because we've seen crazy, crazy things overseas, but the, the demon forces here are a little bit more subtle. And he said one of the major things was through television. He said people are watching things they should not allow to come into their home and they are inviting spirits in. So they're finding ways into people's lives and they're giving the enemy legal access. I remember that something he said, he said, Satan is a legalist. You have a protection when you're in obedience. Yes. But when you deny God's word or his, his, 
provision for protection in your life and you partner with things that open the door to demonic things, yeah. uh, he he takes legal access. Well, that's what Paul was life. talking about yeah. with the Corinthian church. Yeah. He was saying, lest Satan get advantage of us, for we're not ignorant of his devices. Do you know what he was talking about specifically there? Unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Paul was telling them, hey, when you refuse to forgive, because Jesus said, forgive us as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. That's right. not a suggestion. That's, right. that's the Lord's prayer. Jesus said, if you don't forgive, your heavenly father will not forgive you. Remember, he said that. Okay. In Mark 11. All right. So... When we refuse to forgive, we give foothold to the enemy. Um, I will never forget, ever, will I ever forget this. There was a, um, I was at CBN years ago uh, Pat, yeah. with Pat Robinson, yeah. Terry Mewson, and they're, they're, they have a chaplain there or, or a guy who runs like the chapel for the whole thing. He's kind of like the pastor of the staff back in those days. And he shared that there was a person who had come in that they were ministering to, and they just could not get this person free. The person wanted to be free. The person was a baby, baby Christian, wanted to get free, said, please, can you have your counselors pray for me? And he said, we were baffled until the Holy Spirit gave us a vision. And we saw a that every time we prayed for him, this person was in a wind tunnel right? Mm. and Or excuse me, not this person. We saw a demonic spirit. We saw like a wind tunnel and a demonic spirit had a hold on a bar. And when we prayed, it was like a massive wind of the Holy Spirit went through and the, and the demon it just a, hung it on. It had a, a hold. It just hung on. How yeah. interesting. And, okay. and, and the Holy Spirit revealed to them, he's holding on forgiveness. Mm. So they asked him and he said, what well, he started saying it was something, I think it was his father or something like that. And they led him in a prayer to forgive. And as soon as he forgave, they had another vision and they saw the wind blow and they saw that demon just gone like that. Yeah. So, so it know, had legal access, a legal hold yes. because of the unforgiveness. How about Ephesians? Paul says, don't let the sun go down in your wrath, right? Lest we give Satan a foot hold. That's the exact translation in the NLT. A foot hold. And can I just say, I remember when we were early married, I, I, um, <laughs> I would, if I didn't forgive you before we went to sleep at night, it was like I dreamed all night and was mad, got madder and madder and madder in the morning. I'd turn to John and be like, you know oh what you gosh. did in my dreams. You were so yeah, upset it, at it me. Was, it wasn't even a real thing, but because I had slept with that unforgiveness and that bitterness, it had taken over my mindset, had robbed me of my rest. And, and we actually are not created for that. You know, you know, so Lisa, the Bible says the whole world, literally the whole world is under the sway or the influence of the evil one. Now, I mean, that's crazy. So when you get born again, all of a sudden you are free. You because you're part of the kingdom. Yep. You're part of the kingdom of God. You're technically free, but you have to drive out these enemies. Just like when God said, hey, that land is yours, Israel, but you got to drive out all these enemies. And wow. then we have our friend. All right, this is exciting to me. First of all, my son Alec and his beautiful wife Maddie, we had some conversations around this. It looks like he went to our family friend, the Rabbi Brian. We love Rabbi Brian, my Sicilian rabbi. And he talked about some of the giants in the land. I love that he broke down the different tribes and what the tribes actually represent. That's crazy this is, there's amazing. There's nothing new under the sun. The things that no. they fought we are fighting now. So we're going to talk about each of those enemies that they had to drive out of that promised land because it's very symbolic to where we are today. We have to drive many of these enemies out. And, and just think about it, yeah. Lisa. They, they were taking areas, like one tribe would take an area. Yeah. There's only one, one of these enemies we're going to read in that area. So mm -hmm. when you get born again... You may have an, a real problem in an area of anger. You, uh, you may have a, another person may have a real problem in the area of self-discipline. Some of the things we're going to see as we start talking about these seven, oh, actually, how many is it, Lisa? Is it seven? These seven, yeah, um, seven. Ites, ites, we call them, seven that giants. they had to drive out. So let's get into them. The first one he said, we're going to talk about the Hittites. And the Hittites were, it's like a ruling spirit over phobia, terror, deceit, and well, the Fear. children of Israel had to drive these guys out. Exactly. God said, this is your land, but you got to drive them out. And I right. think it's very symbolic to the fact that we get born again, yep. but there are giants we got to drive out. <laughs> right. But I also love the idea that 
deceit and fear and phobia. Every time God appears to a person of promise, one of the first things the angels say is, do not fear or fear not. So everything of God's uh, promises in our life usually has a, a, a fear that tries to stop it, to try to block it. So the Hittites represented those fear. You, we, we, you and I were reading through the Bible where the 10 spies came back and said, there's giants in the land, we're grasshoppers. They were afraid for their wives and their children. And God was like, okay, guys, not going to be a good end for you. I'm not good. Can you pronounce that one? Girgashites? Yeah, the Girgashites. Okay. Tell me about that. Feeling foreign, never fitting in, lacking of belonging. So there, would you say those are your um, spiritual vagabonds? Yep. They, they never fit in. They always are on the outside looking in. And the enemy probably presses on that to create a... Usually that's a root of offense. Yeah. If you look at uh, Cain, yeah. Cain said, I'm going to be a wanderer and a vagabond for the rest of my life. Yeah. So you get this, This he's offended, he's got this complex, I'm, I'm, I'm just, nobody accepts me, nobody understands me, nobody gets me. That's the Girgashites, and that is not of God, because we're baptized into one body. Mm -hmm. All right, if you look at the Amorites, evil speaking, negative thoughts... Okay, that's a big one for a lot of people. Yeah, you you really helped me with this. So let's let's talk about that because I think people do it in innocence. Um, they'll say things like my, like, okay, I fight allergies, and and I remember you saying, don't say don't own them. My allergies. They're not your allergies unless it's, you want to it's, possess them. Exactly. So I can say things like, "Hey, I'm I'm, I'm wrestling with I'm allergies. wrestling with these allergies. Not owning them. Yeah. Not saying these are mine. I embrace them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I shiver, Lisa, if somebody says something like that in regard to a bigger, more deadly disease. Right. Um, I just sit there and there, sometimes I get a chance to stare, share. Other times I realize, hey, it's not the situation. But yeah, but evil why, speaking and words, negative our thoughts words matter. are planted, I believe, by the enemy, and I believe that these am rights represent the enemy what he does we have thoughts that we have that come from our heart and we have thoughts that come in from the outside and that's the ones we've got to be careful of i think too many people listen to themselves instead of speak to themselves can you can, i love what when you said that can you give an example how they do that. Yeah, I just, I feel like um, uh, nobody gets me. I feel worthless. I don't feel like I'm doing any good. Man, don't dwell on those thoughts. The Bible says, uh, you have to replace it with what Jesus says. Jesus said, I have ordained you that you should go and bear fruit. Now, what Jesus considers fruit and what popular or culture, culture mm -hmm. considers fruit might be two different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, your effectiveness is not to be measured by what the culture says is success. How many numbers, how many people are following me and all this. It's your obedience is your effectiveness. I mean, I'm, I'll am i never forget the guy that really influenced me. He had led like hundreds of people to the Lord in his tax accounting business, right? Yeah, Mike. Mm -hmm. Well, he had one janitor. He's and, and who knows, that janitor may have only reached him, but he was a janitor of a, a, of a sawmill. And he so impacted Mike's life. Mike, Wasn't Mike an orphan? I'm trying to remember. Mike's yeah. father, had died. grandfathers on both sides were all shot by men and killed. His mother ended up in insane asylum. Five of his six, his six siblings died of overdoses or some kind of like liver disease from alcohol. Mike just weeps when he talks about it. He says, that was my destiny. But one paper mill manager took me in and told me about Jesus and discipled me. Yeah, the and now he's had a, right? Mike's retired now yeah. after having 10, 12,000 clients in his business, you know, in, in Paulson and Paulson in Dallas. And, and he's just done great. But, you know, what happened? This this paper mill janitor mm -hmm. taught him yeah. this isn't your destiny. Yeah. Your destiny is Jesus ordained you to bear fruit. Your destiny is God has made you a son of God with his nature in he's you. He's adopted you. He's right. adopted you. <clears throat> so then you have the Canaanites. That's a slave mentality or a low self-esteem. How can you have a low self-esteem when God says you're the object of my affection? Mm -hmm. How can you have a low self-esteem when God says love your neighbor as yourself? You know, if you don't love yourself, you're going to love the, your neighbor the way you love yourself. And the only way you can love yourself is knowing that God loves you. Is receiving his love. And, and, and the his truth love. is, 
I will always have a low self-esteem if I am the measure of everything. Yeah. So it, of course. And it, society's and, and, and Instagram is the measure of everything, sure, right? Sure, absolutely. Okay, so next is parasites or per, 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 parasites. I it, I, it sounds like parasites. But it's it's per, parasites. Parasites. Yes. Okay. Feeling unprotected in an unwalled village, lack of discipline. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Here we go. That's a big self control. One. So a lack of self-control, a yeah. lack of discipline. That's one of the fruits and, of the spirit, self-control. You know, absolutely. I still, yes, hallelujah. I still can remember going to um, Alex's teacher. Do you remember that? She was like, well, I was shocked to hear that you guys were ministers since there seems to be a glaring lack of self-control. I'm like, he's a six-year-old boy. What oh do you gosh. think? Do you remember Seriously? that? She's like, and that's a yeah, fruit of the spirit. Yeah, she could see him now. Oh, he's so successful I know. now. It's crazy. Uh, All right. High bites, yes, which is uh, limited vision. All right, limited life, limited vision. How many people settle far below what God has called them to do because of having those kind of thoughts and those kind of enemies attacking them? And can I touch on that? Do you, you know going back to the whole judges where Deborah says village life had ceased, mm. and, and it's and when I was studying that. The Israelites were afraid to tend the fields they even had because they thought they would be attacked by the enemies. So they did not tend what they had. Nothing came in, nothing went out, everything was shut down. And when everything is shut down, when you don't have purpose, you start to have infighting. And so it's very interesting. It There was an infighting and the people forget it's the enemy is the outside. So right now, I feel like that's our culture right now. We have infighting when we forget that we have an enemy that is attacking us and we are not one another's enemies. That's so good, Lisa. We got the Jebusites, which is entitlement and uh, and, yeah. and looking down your nose at others. Yep. And that is a huge one. And so these are, you, you guys might wanna just go back over this, write this down, but these are things that, man, if these thoughts start hitting you, you have to directly speak to them. Mm. Second Corinthians 10 verses three, four, and five says, though we walk in the flesh, we don't war. Listen to this. You're not yeah. in a playground. You're in yeah. a war zone. Yeah. We don't war according to the flesh for the weapons. Listen to this. We have weapons of our warfare are not fleshly, but they're mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. Yeah. What are the strongholds? They're not up in the atmosphere. He lists them casting down Every yeah. reasoning, okay, a reasoning. We just read to you reasonings. Yeah. It's imagination. The better translation is casting down every reasoning and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And then listen to what Paul says. The next statement is so good. He says, ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. In other words, you don't have authority over what you tolerate. If I tolerate entertain. pity, yeah. mm -hmm. I tolerate lack of self-control, I tolerate these things that we've just gone through, unforgiveness, mm -hmm. anger, going down to bed, mm -hmm. I tolerate it. I have no authority over these things. So in your obedience, Paul says, ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. There is something to be said about being obedient. I know it's a word that people don't like because they immediately, their mind goes to the law. That has nothing to do with the law of Moses. Obedience has to do with the fact that God has empowered you. Listen to Paul, what Paul says in Philippians chapter 2, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but in my absence also. Mm -hmm. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Yeah. Listen to what Jesus said. You are my friends if you obey everything, all my commandments, everything I command you to do. Okay, listen to what Jesus says. Go into all the world, make disciples of all nations. What does he say? Teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. There's obedience. Old again. Testament. We had to obey to earn favor with God. The New Testament is we have favor with God. We have his grace before we ever did anything to earn it. We can never earn it. But once we have his grace, that grace empowers us to obey. I love that so much. So we are going to close. I want to thanks. 
thank you all for tuning in. I'm very awkward on the closing in case you haven't no, noticed that not. in You're past adorable. episodes. Okay. <laughs> all right. We want to remind you to rate, subscribe and review the, the show. The other thing we want to remind you of, we have a whole discipleship acts uh, app that has tons of courses, books, resources on there. And it's called messenger X. You can get it by going to the app store or to Google play, or you can just go on your computer and go to messengerx.com, download it. You'll have all that at your fingertips, literally thousands, probably over a thousand hours of discipleship resource materials on there. And it's in different languages. And then we want to remind you also the awe of God just came out and words with God just came out this spring. Both books are available at all your bookstores or on Amazon, however you want to get it. Now, until next time, this has been Conversations with John and my beautiful wife, Lisa. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Conversations with John and Lisa Bevere. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and rate this podcast wherever you love to listen. Also, if you haven't already, go right ahead and download Messenger X to hear more content from John and Lisa Bevere and other great messengers. Again, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time on Conversations with John and Lisa.